Day six since the ice storm and crews still working hard to restore power to residents who have been far too long without heat and hydro. Good evening. Thanks for joining us, everyone. A warning tonight. None of you who have lost power at some point this week want to hear authorities saying this evening that more homes and businesses could lose power again because of what may be in store weather-wise this weekend. Meanwhile, crews, as you just saw, are making steady progress on restoring power for those still in the dark. Here's where we stand tonight. In Toronto, nearly 26,000 households are still without power. It means more than 75,000 of you are still sitting in the dark after last weekend's ice storm. On our roads, traffic signals are still down at some 90 intersections in Toronto. Officials are reminding you tonight to treat them as a four-way stop. So, as we close in on a full week without power, emergency crews still can't say when all the lights will be back on. And tonight, they warn for some it may not be until the new year. Let's go to our Alan Carter with the very latest. Alan. Well, Carolyn, the real concern for the next 12 hours is wind, and namely any kind of a windstorm that could really uh, topple any trees that haven't already come down. If you see right here beside me, look at this branch. It's just cased in ice, and obviously this is a small example of what's all around the city. And the concern is that any more tree branches come down, they take out power lines, and the power goes with it. Outside the Grandy House in East Toronto, the split tree in the front yard is roped up in the hopes of preventing further damage. While inside... Here's our thermostat. It was at zero, though. Now up to six degrees with the help of a heater. But upstairs in the bathroom, ice. Across the city, crews continue to try and reconnect the power, often one home at a time. And there's concern of more damage to come. Tonight, we might have wind gusts over 40 kilometers an hour. Approximately there are 30, but if they get higher to 40 or 50, that's going to cause problems. New damage to the system means getting power back to people like the Grandies may take longer. That will mean more nights in a nearby hotel. There's no sense in staying here. We, we, we really haven't been prepared for this. In the face of growing impatience and anger, officials continue to stress everything possible is being done. In the face of criticism for slipping away to a family dinner in Florida, Toronto's deputy mayor offered this to those residents of Toronto who have uh, been affronted by uh, my behavior. I want to convey to them a very sincere apology. Um, I've learned the lesson. While the politicians at the top are being taken to task, the crews on the ground are being celebrated by the public, sometimes too much, slowing down work. While we appreciate the sentiments, uh, truly, truly appreciate them, and people are without power and they just want to say thank you, um, it's, you know, it's really not the best thing to do. At the Grandy House, no power means no fun. I haven't used my phone in the last week. No TV, no games for him. How's that been? Kind of boring. Perhaps the least of the worries for crews now wondering if the wind will bring down more trees and cause more outages. So this is sort of a scene that is all across the city. Impassable sidewalks because of tree branches that are down. Crews are currently working street by street to try and clear this. But you get a sense when you drive around the city how much tree fall there has been. And just in the last couple of hours, Toronto's deputy mayor put out a statement saying that 20% of the tree canopy in this city has been lost because of the storm. Carolyn? That's huge. And just watching that one behind you, Alan, it, it's scary stuff. All right, Alan Carter, it thank sure you. Is. Now, being prepared for situations like